Well, good day, guys. That time of year, I've been getting a few um, inquiries about doing a breeding and feeding video, and I did one, I think, about two years ago. So we're going to do another one today for the people that have been asking. I'll show you the ferrets I'm breeding this year. I will run over uh, why I chose that particular those particular ferrets. I'll show you the father and um, and give you my a little bit of a philosophy about about my way of breeding. Just my philosophy and, and how I go about it and what the thoughts are behind that. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll start with the feeding. Um, and the, the important things that I think that's the dry food I use um, if you're going to use dry food just make sure that it's grain free uh, this one's got 57% protein and it's got no grains in it whatsoever this one's ocean fish so it's got fish oil in it, in it as well so if you're going to use grain um, dry food make sure it's very high in protein and also grain free don't ever feed your bread breads to your ferret and and don't give them normal milk because they're lactose lactose intolerant so if you're going to give them a dry food just make sure it's grain free and it doesn't have um you know things like bread and bread in it they don't they don't digest that sort of stuff or too well at all it's not good for them so the important things number one thing calcium carbonate it's just a white powder that i use and what i do is i i've got uh i feed mine chicken mint like this i normally buy it in 50 kilo lots and what i do with it because i get it in large bags is as i'm taking it out of those bags to put into smaller bags i'll mix in some calcium carbonate an egg usually just the yolks and some stuff here which is called Predamax which is what the zoos use and it's just a carnivore vitamin mineral supplement and I'll mix that in with the mints and squash it all up those three things but in particular the, car the calcium is very important for your ferrets mine are basically mainly on a raw diet like they get 90% raw food that raw chicken they get plenty of rabbit mixed with the egg the uh, vitamin supplement and the calcium and um and they've always got a little bit of dry food what i normally try and do especially in australia because we got a lot of flies this time of year and all the way through summer i only try and give them enough meat that they're going to eat overnight i only put it in at night time just before dark and then take it out in the morning what they haven't eaten and the reason being the flies will get get to it and it gets fly blown pretty quickly so yeah that's what I, that's basically what i feed mine but they also get things like liver heart um, kidney any sort of meat really as long as it's not like salami and stuff you, you keep away from your processed meat and always try and give it to them raw so that's um the diet's sort of pretty simple isn't it they love things like pigeons mice uh, any sort of bird any any meat really they just love meat and that's what they thrive on they'll eat fish raw fish but like, like during the summer like i said only try and put enough in the cage that they're going to eat it and then during the day just leave them a little bit of kibble you know and they they really love that stuff this stuff's called um high pro high pro premium grain free high low high high hypo allergenic hypoallergenic whatever that is whatever that is complete imbalance but yeah they make different sorts they make a turkey one and etc have a look at your, your normal shop but any one of the grain high quality grain free ones normally they're okay ivory coats are all right as well they make a grain free one that's pretty good all right on to the breeding i mean look the, the feeding part of it sort of takes care of itself doesn't it like it's not rocket science don't go giving them normal dog food or, or normal cat food because they're full of they call them fillers and what they normally use for fillers is grain because it's cheap and that's why you pay a little bit more for the grain free stuff because they don't they don't have all those cheap fillers in it. 
Now you buy that stuff like you get from the supermarket, super coat and all that, it's just crap. Look, we have to worry about what they're feeding humans these days and they don't, you know, the regulations around that aren't all that strict. Can you imagine what it's like in the pet in industry? You don't know what they're putting in these, in these, um, these dry foods. So if you're going to use them, try and use the, the, the higher end ones and your ferrets will be all the better for it. Uh, what else do I give them? We did speak about eggs, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, what I normally do is try and give me, me ferrets just the, the yolk of the egg. The yolk and the egg, the white of it, can give them something called biotin deficiency. So try and steer away from giving the whites of the, the, the um, egg to your ferrets, unless... You, you're mixing the egg properly whisk it right up so it's so it's um, reasonably consistent with white to yolk because what happens is the biotin deficiency comes from the white of the egg but the yellow neutralizes that bad effect in the white so if you mix it up supposedly it's all right but if you want to steer on the safe side like I do I just separate them and give them the yolks and I don't have to worry about all that sort of drama. So uh, if you're going to feed your ferrets eggs, no more than twice a week, it's plenty. Uh, the calcium you can give them, you know, two, three times a week. If you've got raw food like rabbit, pigeon, bird, mince, just sprinkle a bit of calcium powder on it. You can pick it up at any pet shop. Uh, the Predamax you may have to look around for, some people, some places keep it, some people don't, but you can get it online pretty readily. Um, and that's the stuff the zoos use and apparently it's really good they give it to all the things like the lions the tigers and all of their carnivores because they're eating just meat sometimes the meat that they're giving them um, it's not all that that flash off that crash off because they give them the cheapest stuff they can buy and so what they do is they supplement it with that stuff so that whatever's not in the meat that they're giving them they'll get from the, the, the supplement so that's a bit about that. All right, let's get uh, Shorty out, who's actually due today. Uh, this is Graham's ferret, and she's all of these three ferrets that I bred this year have been bred to spite. So there's Shorty. Look how fat she is. Pretty fat, isn't she? And she's due today. So we'll put her down. Shorty's confirmation is not. You know, exceptional. She's a bit short in the body, which I think well, like, well, why Graham called her shorty. But her other attributes are through the roof. Probably more than any other ferret that I've ever seen is her prey drive. More than any other ferret I've ever seen. If I get a dead rabbit out and put it near her, she just... She goes to a, a completely calm ferret to, to an absolute savage in a split second. Um, so she, she's, a, she's a beauty and that's the main reason I bred it because her prey drive you won't I've never seen a ferret with, with that high prey drive in my life so um, that's saying something you know most of my ferrets they're pretty they're pretty savage and you know you'll see an example of that that on this video I'm going to put a, a burrow that I did today and you'll see that I put a rabbit near one of my ferrets and pretty much the same thing but Shorty's just on another level Although her confirmation, you know, she's a little bit short in the legs, a bit shorter in the body. But we put a ferret to her uh, that's, that's going to improve those areas. That's why we use spike on her. Spike's long in the body, long in the legs, really sharp in the face for a buck. I'll get him out as soon as I can find him. Come here, Spike. He's the dad of all of the, all of the kids this year. If you've been following me for a while, you would have seen Spike. But a big, long ferret. You know, like he's really, really long. Sharp in the head for a buck. Nice, long, straight legs. Really long legs. Very, very long legged, see that? And he's got an excellent temperament. So when you're, um, you're breeding your ferrets, I think it's important not to line breed them, not to inbreed them. Don't breed them when they're related. It's all the same thing. What happens when you do that, in my experience? And I've been down the road of line breeding, so I'm speaking from experience. 
this is what you're going to do to your ferrets you can listen to other people and say oh this and that but take it from me have a look at you know i've been around this game 50 years now 50 years plus so um take it from somebody who's made the mistakes and i'm just trying to give you information to stop you making the same mistakes you'll listen to other people who think they know what they're talking about but take it from me they don't like they just if they're saying to line breed or, or inbreed them or breed father to daughter and stuff like that they're making a mistake and i'm going to tell you why it's just my, through my experience when you line breed or inbreed what happens is first thing you shorten the lifespan of the ferret in my experience like when i had ferrets that i line bred um their life expectancy you know was nowhere near what 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 the ferrets that i'm breeding now are you look at grace nine years old coming on nine years old still going took her out last week um how old sally sally was eight willow willow was eight you know so um and they were working sort of most after five they start slowing down but but they were still going like like grace you know old and slow but still going so when you in what line breed them you normally get you know four four or five if you're lucky and then normally they'll get some sort of cancer or something like that i also found that too that it weakens their immune system to different sort of things you find that when you line breed them or inbreed them um, they tend to get illnesses easier they get cancers easier um, as well as a whole host of different other side effects that you get from it it compromises their immune system is what i'm saying guys to a whole host of different things in my experience those type of ferrets when i was lion breeding got sick a lot their diet was good everything was good but they didn't live as long and they got sick a lot yeah so why do people line breed all right i'll tell you what why they do it they've got two really good ferrets and they really like them but they're related let's say it's father and daughter or they just got two good really good ferrets so what they'll do is they want the, to get kits out of them because their parents are good so they breed them so that they get those same sort of ferrets with the same sort of traits agreed that that's what will happen but for every subsequent year you line breed those ferrets they're going to get continually worse in a couple of areas that i'm going to talk about and all you can ever expect out of that philosophy of line breeding is more of the same you got you got two good parents if you breed them the best you can hope for the very best you can hope for is more of the same more of what you've already got and that won't will not continue i can tell you this is what will happen over the subsequent generations your ferrets will get shorter in the legs shorter in the snout wider wider between the ears uh, with potential of psychological and temperament issues uh, along with the compromised immune system so they get they get big buffy heads shorter in the legs and their body shortens right up not to mention that um, in severe cases they'll get bad deformities in their conformation with especially they get weakened back hips uh, and weak weakened bone structure that's what that's what you can look forward to if you're line breeding guys i've been down that road so how do you get around that well you pick out ferrets that aren't related for a start number one priority keep them as far apart as they are look the um the genes the gene pool in australia is pretty small as it is most of the ferrets we've already got a um, related in some way shape or form so trying to keep them separate it's hard enough task as it is try and find out the history of your ferret before you breed it or the one that you're bringing in so how do you know what to breed all right so we got a ferret like shorty who's who's got some pretty outstanding traits that stand out from other ferrets like her prey drive um, which is very very high if not you know on top of the priority list for me when i'm when i'm picking out a ferret if i take out a young ferret and from day one when i put a rabbit in front of it, it doesn't grab it straight away when i shake the rabbit in front of it that ferret will never make it to my breeding program ever 
So all of mine are day, I call them day one ferrets. So you put them in the burrow from day one, they'll work. You shake a rabbit in front of them, and we're talking about, you know, 12, 13 week old ferret. Even as, as low as 11, 11 weeks old, we've been working them lately. And they're just attacking rabbits from that, from day one. Put them in a burrow, they work the burrow, shake a dead rabbit in front of them, they grab hold of it. They're the ones that I, that I breed from. Um, and I've got to a stage now where it's, re it's, re it's you know, pretty consistent. There's not many of the ferrets that I've got now that I'm breeding. Um, there's not a lot of difference between the worst one and the best one. You have your, you know, of course, your, your outstanding ones every now and again, but the rest of them are reasonably consistent. And most of them, if not all of them, are all day one ferrets. Um, and so try and make sure that they're not related. Try and avoid these inbreeding issues. Don't listen to these people who will tell you, I've been line breeding for 20 years and my ferrets are fine. <laughs> yeah, so have I, mate, and believe me, they're not. Uh, you know, you hear all sorts of things, but the proof's always in the pudding, isn't it, guys? Um, not only do I say what I say, I back it up with evidence. If these people are saying what they're saying, have a look how long they've been breeding for, um, you know, what, what sort of temperaments have their ferrets got, have a look at the things I, I said to you about how how wide are they between the, between the ears? How short are they in the snout? Are their legs down? And you can guarantee, mate, that's not normal for a ferret. That comes from bad breeding, all those, those things I'm talking about. Their conformation should be as close to a wild ferret as possible. Um, you know, you look back in the days when everybody had them, and we, they were all just about greyhound ferrets. I'm not, Long in the body, long in the legs, you know, long in the snout, short between the ears, and good to handle. So, you know, all of these, a lot of these um, temperament issues, I call them, that all, that all stems back to inbreeding too. Uh, they're not stable, they're not stable in their mind, you know, there's no, there's no consistency, they, they're all over the place. And, uh, they have mental issues, you know, because of the inbreeding. Not all the time, but you know, you'll see those things crop up. What I'm trying to tell you is, is how to get a consistent line of stability, you know, and consistency. So try and um, try and listen to what I'm saying. All right, so that that was Shorty. We had a bit of a look at her. I'll show you who else I bred. I wasn't going to breed her this year, and that's Trixie. Now Trixie is a lot like Shorty, very, very similar type ferret. Really, really, but she's very, very straight. She's, a, she's, not, over, she's not long in the body. She, her legs are a little bit short. She's even got a stumpy tail that she was born with. Same as her mum, her mum had one too. You remember stumpy, but an exceptional ferret. Uh, you know, like you won't get too many like her, and I, I wasn't even going to breed her this year, and I've got plenty of her kits, and I love her line. She throws just consistently good kits. So that's Trixie Girl, and we've bred her with Spike too. And what Spike does with her kits, and I, I'll show you one of her kits from, you know, I've got a bunch of them, like Buffy, Zena, and Buffy and Zena are from her. And then we got last year from Cuda and her. I'll just show you one of them. You've all seen them if you watch my videos. But you have a look at these. Put you up there and put you up there. And you'll see compared to Trixie, they're bigger. For a start, they're bigger. They're heaps a lot longer in the legs and heaps longer in the body. See how long they are in the body? And good temperaments. That's another good thing about, about uh, Trixie, her temperament is unbelievable. It's really, really good. One, two, look how long she is. Straight, really straight legs, big, long, like Spike, you know. Just nice and good to handle. And here's the other one there. Come on, hop down, hop down. Right, so that's that's um, a reason I breed Trixie. This will be her last year breeding. I wasn't even going to breed it this year. And I bred one of her daughters this year, and I'll show you her, the one that I bred. 
He's out of the same litter as Zena. And that's Buffy. This is Buffy here. She's a dark nosed polecat. See, she's pretty fat. She's about a week away. But a beautiful ferret, mate. Big straight, dead straight legs conformation. A mad savage. Easy to handle. Short between the ears, long in the snout. And what um, Spike will do to her is just improve that conformation even more again. So I started with Trixie, made the kits more how I want them with other bucks that had the traits, you know, good, good prey drive, easy to handle, good to work, long in the legs, short between the ears, and no book heads. Bred her with, um, with Cuda, who I bred. Who came from Dan's line, Rip, and Rip was a beauty if you remember him. So now we take that ferret, which is Buffy, and we put Spike over it. Enter in Spike. Completely different line. Came from Peter Varney. He was a ferreting contractor. Um, that's where he came from. As did Rip, who came from uh, Dan, who also uh, at least semi-professionally does rabbit hunting. So I always try to access the best ferrets that I can to breed. You know, you try and access the very best. And so what that means to me is I'll at least try them out before I breed with them. But even before that, I try and get them off people who've been working ferrets and breeding ferrets for generations. Like I'm talking about, you know, at least five, ten years. They've been breeding a particular ferret for a particular reason and not line breeding. Uh, and they're, they're, it's the sort of things I look for when I'm bringing in a buck. So just a, that's a little bit of information, guys. If you look up a philosophy called hybrid vigor, uh, you can look it up online or, you know, put it on your phone, you'll be able to check for it. Hybrid vigor philosophy. It'll give you an, an idea about how I think about um, a breeding and, and why I introduce different different ferrets with different traits and put them together. If you've got a, a trait priority system, you know, prey, you know, things like um, prey drive, um, stanima of the ferret, do they use their nose or, and their brain when they're working? And what I mean by what do I mean by that? All right, this is another thing I look for in my ferrets when I'm working them. Uh, and I bring ferrets in from all different places and have a look at them and see if they're very strong in some of the priority traits that I have. You put a fer ferret in a burrow uh, after, after they've had a bit of experience, a ferret that uses its brain does this. When the burrow's empty, it just comes out and, will, and refuse to go back down. Not refuse, but it won't. It, it, you'll put it back down and you'll have to probably make it. And it'll run through and come straight out another hole and walk away from the burrow because the burrow's empty and it knows the burrow's empty because it's smart that particular type of ferret uh, normally also what they do is because they use their brain they normally they'll use their nose as well because they're smart a, ferret, a rabbit comes out of the burrow runs into the rabbit net and often you'll see my ferrets follow the scent along the ground to the long net and grab the the rabbits in the long net because they're intelligent a less intelligent animal with high prey drive will do this like and i had one like Haley was a prime example and sally i had one called sally had it for years unbelievable prey drive um, worked the burrows you know really good on their feet fast on their feet it's another prior trait that i look at how good are they on their feet their agility um, so i had Haley and Sally, very similar in type. But work the burrow, if they came across a rabbit, instant savage. So they were good at bolting rabbits. The trouble with them were they missed a lot and they'd come out of the burrow because they were so high proactive, they'd come out of the burrow and just keep on going. Like you put them in this hole, they come out that hole, and if there wasn't another hole in front of them, they'd just take up across the paddock. Because they're very high in prey drive but low in intelligence. So, um, you know, extreme prey drive, very good on their feet, good conformation, but no brains. You know, they, they didn't use their brains. So, so you've got to, you're trying to look for a good balanced ferret, you know, that one's a bit of an all-rounder. 
so you'll get a ferret that's got two or three traits like I took that Haley and I, I put a ferret over her that was a lot smart pretty smart and had a lot was strong in the areas that she was weak in I put a ferret over her which was spike longer legs more intelligent a um, little bit better not as high proactive and I made um, the kits that come out of them were pretty good like, and I've still got one which is star uh, so you know I took a ferret that was high proactive good prey drive was very good in confirmation but had no brains and put a ferret over it that was that was pretty clued on with a better temperament and I got star out of it so if you've got a ferret like with the, the bad traits in them don't concentrate on their bad traits concentrate on their good stuff and do grab a buck that's strong in her weak areas to complement that and if you keep doing that over generations what happens eventually is you'll get a consistency in the kits that you that you that you're breeding you'll get to a stage where the ferrets that you're breeding from are very good in you know six or seven out of the ten different areas that you're looking at that you that you that you're concentrating on the traits that you want for your ferrets and there's different things that become important depending on what type of ferreting you're doing uh, you know and what sort of country that you're doing are you doing small burrows all the time are you doing great big ones you know if you're doing great big burrows all the time uh, what sort of weather have you got you have to take all these things into consideration and breed the, the type of um, ferret that's that's better suited to your type of ferreting, ferreting and the environment they're a european animal they don't do well in the heat so if you're in the heat you want to breed an animal that's got a bit better stanima it does a bit, little bit better than the most of the other ferrets you know and you can pick them you'll get ferrets that they all pretty much work the same and one of them's a stand out because it always works longer before it tires like you get some that you'll do half a dozen burrows and they start to tire out and one of them it just it will go all day because it's got extreme stanima and you get that with athletes don't you you get a whole football team and then amongst those you got your ones that are just extreme more stanima they just cover more k's and they do it consistently all year and same with the ferrets so that's a trait that you look at too stanima anyway guys a uh, bit of information i think i've covered a little bit if you've got any questions put them in the the comments and i'll try and answer them as best i can always make sure your ferrets have got uh, clean clear water fresh water anyway you know that mine dirty it up pretty quick they got um, wood chips which you hear a lot of people say don't you what are you using wood chips for yeah it's all chemical free stuff guys calm down uh, I've been you know I think I I know a little bit about what I'm doing I use wood chips and I use them for a reason why we live in Australia buddy in summertime it's real hot and guess what wood chips don't hold heat not like straw Stra you're using straw and you're breeding your kits in them and you get 40 degree days not, <laughs> as well as the air conditioning your cages have your cages well ventilated especially the breeding boxes like this like these breeding boxes at the top of them you'll see these all these holes drilled all the way around see that and all that does is hot air rises and it comes out somewhere for the heat to go little things like that try and pay attention all right well that's going to be it guys um i've probably forgotten a few things but anyway not to worry i'll do the best so i can i'm not a, a computer i don't remember remember everything the heat's coming heat is a big factor with your ferrets try and keep them in the shade at the very least you can buy mist air conditioning systems that spray mist into the cage which drops at the outside temperature um and that helps them a little bit too so take care of your ferreting got your ferrets and they'll take care of you enjoy this sport guys that's going to be it for another day whatever you're doing in life as long as you're not hurt, hurting anybody make sure you enjoy because life goes past way too fast bye for now well g'day guys how you all going hope you're doing well out and about again um it's about nine o'clock starting to get warm already um there is a few snakes in this area i've seen a lot of skins around here so i'm just going to do a quick burrow grab a couple of rabbits and take off 
to sort of get out, give the ferrets a run and give the dogs a bit of a run. And I'll be doing a lot of that over the summer, just shoot out to a quick burrow or two. And look, I do that most of the year. Gone of the days where I'd go out and spend um, all day out in the field. I do that rarely now, occasionally. Uh, so yeah, burrow in here, done it before. Um, probably done it twice in the last six months. But they have bred up a little bit in this area. There's not huge numbers, but there's there's a few, but not many. So um, we will get something out of here. Got a few ferrets with me. Don't know how long I, I was. Don't know how long I'm going to be out, but it depends on the weather. It depends on how hot it gets and what sort of ground. I like to be able to see my feet. This area is not so bad. He, he puts sheep in here and keeps the grass down a little bit. So we've got uh, Lottie, Spark and Gypsy in that cage. Uh, in there we've got Sasha and Bree. I've got Lena in, in the box down there because she's she's after, look, I spoke last time about hormones and she's a bit bitchy and she's squealing and carry on and the squealing was driving me mad so I stuck her in there and here we've got Zena and, and Star so we're going to start with Zena and Star Buffy which is um, Zena's sister she's pregnant and due in about a week there's a little bit of a gap here but that's about it there is a uh, section down here I think it's separate to, to this burrow. I might just run a ferret through there quickly. It's a bit of a separate burrow, this one. Do you take good ferrets, these ferrets? Beautiful morning, birds are singing, not much wind. Look at the ferret right behind it. That's enough! Chase! Chase! That's enough. Mine. Dash! Dash! Move. Ferret back down. Good dogs. Chase, 
скучим. sitting up like that. We'll just grab another couple of ferrets here. These ones have obviously caught one. So I can't hear any running in circles, so they're not showing their head. Oh, you've heard a big bump. The reason you colour parts on the other two, obviously, because they're black eyed white. Give them a bit of a hurry up. Dash, dash. Be a nice one to eat this one.
dogs. Children's due to have their kids kids today. Probably have them tonight. Zena. I think it was Zena back down. one we got three out of there star back down Lena I hear some squealing but it's right down deep Like star down. Yeah, no, it's star. Lena. Do 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 do. Sasha. Who? 
not over there, they got Sees it. She can hear something here. They've caught one down there. See how she's waiting. Sash up. Sasha. They're losing all their summer, their winter coat now. Start to pick them up soon, guys. So they bolted three and killed one. It's what I thought we'd get about three or four. But you see them kits now, they're a little bit just over half grown, so that's what I was waiting for on this burrow. I've seen a couple of kids on it in the last month or two. I just wanted them to get a little bit bigger. Man, yeah, the ferrets are all... I mean, they know, like these ferrets, They've had plenty of experience and they just know when the burrow's empty. That's obviously one of Storm's kits. Real quick. If you remember how Storm was, exactly like that, exact same nature. I'll start to pick them up now. Grab the carry box. So we did okay, didn't we? You know, we, we got three out of there. They killed at least one. So no complaints. Good dogs. Good boy. Come here. Where's the chase? There he is. Where's him, Rabbit? Yeah, go, go get him. Watch him. Ah. 
it's the So you So just waiting for Zena and Zena and Lena, I think. Zena and Sasha, one of the two. I'll, I'll let you know when they come out. Yeah, it's Lena. A real bitchy at the moment, aren't you? straight back in the cage really starting to warm up it's probably going to be it guys come out quick burrow grab three rabbits took me about 15 minutes and shoot off home but what I might do is um I've got permission on a property out here on over near those hills there I might go for a drive out there and have a bit of a look around just for a drive Check out a few burrows I know out there. Zena. We'll give Bree a run. Let her have a look around. Star and Zena. Yeah, Star and Zena. Okay, straight away on the rabbits. She's mad that Lena. I'll keep her separate, she's real big here at the moment. Look at that. Yeah, real big here at the moment. by yourself because you've been a bit of a pig. I'll breed her next year that Lena, she's real good. Storm was a little bit like her. It's so similar in nature. But I'll tell you what, when Storm had kits you really had to watch your fingers mate, she was very protective. And she's that that ferret it's always trying to drag um it's got mother instincts that's why she's sort of carrying on a bit it's always trying to drag the other ferrets into the box and this time of year i spoke the other day about how their hormones play up and their personality changes and um and some of them get a bit like her a bit narky you know i mean they're not really fighting they're just carrying on you know so we've got Bree in here which is her sister just to give her a bit of work 
I knew I wasn't going to do any more and I just wanted to have a run around. What a glorious morning, mate. There's Ross's place over there, Ross McGregor. I've got permission on his place too. He owns all this this side of that hill. It's all the way down to Sugarloaf. Dash, come! Oh, good boy, good boy, good boy. Yeah, young Dash, eight months old now. And he's just starting to starting to catch him properly. Which is pretty good going considering his age. There's Bree. Alright guys, I'll pick her up now. I'll go for a bit of a drive, have a bit of a look around and pick out some burrows. But gonna be a lot of this going out, hitting a burrow or two and going back home. Which is normally what I do anyway these days. Yeah, unless I'm out with a couple of mates and we do some really big sets. But it's hard this time of year, guys. You've really got to watch your snakes. You're never going to escape them completely, but you try and minim minimise the risk. I'll just let Bree go because I wanted to have a, a, bit of a, look, a bit of a look around. And it's an empty burrow. But she was out... Um, when did I have her out? Not yesterday, day before I had him out. I didn't go out yesterday, it was the wind was howling. But that's about what I do just about every second day. Weather per weather permitting. There's another couple of burrows just around here, and I know there's one just up there, it's got a couple in it. I've seen them run in there. But I'll get to them, you know, I'll get, I'll get around to it. Alright, she's done. She's... Wants to keep going. Alrighty, I'll pick her up when she comes out. Pack the long nets up. Cut the rabbits, go for a bit of a drive and then shoot off home. Whatever you're doing in life, guys, make sure you enjoy. Because your life goes past. Just way too fast. Bye for now. Hawk having a good look. Here's he, here she is. Alrighty, it's going to be it for another day. <laughs>